is Angela Taylor with Taylor Homestead Soap. And people seem to <laughs> oh, find it funny that I put myself in the corner. I'm putting myself in the corner again. But this time I've got kind of a pretty background, see? That's kind of cool. Why not? So today I am not making soap, but I am doing some prerequisites to some loofah soap. I have um, a major loofah plant. If you've been on this channel, you've seen the loofah plant um, several times. And I've actually been able to harvest some of the loofah um, and take the outside off. Um, and get the seeds out. It's really cool, guys. I've never, I've never done it before. So I wanted to share the process with you. Um, right now, I see today I've harvested two loofahs. Um, I'm going to show you one that's ginormous. I've measured it out, and the other one I've cut into pieces, and I've taken the seeds out, and I'll show you how to do that. I also have on here. It's November the second, and there are some several species around our house that um, of plants that have bloomed, and I wanted to show you them. One of them is called a pine apple sage. If you've never seen it or planted it, um, I highly recommend it. We're in a zone seven here in North Carolina, and it does the pineapple sage does really well in a, in a zone seven. Um, I also have some Camilla plants. They also bloom in. Well, it's November and they're blooming beautifully. They also do well in a zone seven environment. So they were just too pretty to pass up and not show you on my channel. So um, hang out for that. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a big thumbs up and uh, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. So guys, I am so excited about this. It's really cool to watch something grow to be this big and then be able to harvest um, something after you've watched it grow and grow and grow um it's really cool so i wanted to show you i actually picked one of these today right now that one is green you can see this one down here is super green it's not ready yet um if they're super green they're not ready and you don't want to eat them but i do want to show you what they look like when they're ready to become loofah and i'm going to open it up for you so you can see because it's super cool so this is what it looks like when it's on the vine and it goes from being green like that to brown like this now that you can eat them when they're young but you don't want to eat them when they're as big as green and that as that one is you want to wait until they look like this now um a lot of people believe that loofah is grown in the ocean loofah is not grown in the ocean it grows like this and this is, like I said, this is three plants that have just vined and vined and vined and vined. I've had to cut them back because they would have taken over all of this space. But I want to show you what it looks like when you open up one of these. So you can see I've started to open it up there. You can see there, you can see start seeing some of the pieces on the inside of it. But when you open it up, this is physically what's inside this dried piece of loofah. Look at that. And people use this all the time as like you put it in the you put it in the inside of soap. Now, the thing is, it is just a little bit wet and I am going to let it dry um, a little bit before I actually, you know, put it in any kind of soap. Um, Cuz it's got it's it's wet. It was soggy. We had a lot of rain last night. But look at this. And on the inside of this, will be the seeds. So look at this, guys. This is this big old loofah, and I'll put it up to the side so you can kind of see it as a hole there. That's what's inside of that once it gets to be all brown. Look how cool that is. Now I'm gonna let it dry. There are seeds inside there how cool that is so you can see down inside there like that there are actually seeds inside so I think what I'm probably gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to um, let it dry out just a little bit more until the seeds are ready to come out um, and then what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna cut I will cut this into pieces and I will make loofah soap out of this I'm going to dip this into um, a soap base and then um, you'll get to see you know all the soap and this becomes part of your scrubby thing and then it um, 
you can put it you can throw it away or you can put it in a compost bin but I just I think that's amazing that it goes from this green from that green cucumber looking thing to that hi so I wanted to show you what we did with our loofah tonight we have been cutting it quite literally I've been having to cut the seeds out of my loofah because you don't want seeds in your soap that would be terrible so I literally am like cutting this open see that seed right there that black thing are seeds so they're all down the middle of this loofah so I'm literally having to use my scissors and cut down the middle just a little bit and then we're going to show you how many seeds we got out of this one loofah they're the bunch three and a half See all those seeds? Those all, all those seeds came from one loofah. One loofah. Now they're not washed. They're just right down the... But isn't that, isn't that crazy? I wanted to show you this. This is one of the loofahs that I picked. Not the one you saw previously, a second one. And this thing is over 19 inches long. And it is absolutely full, full, full of seeds. So cool. On top of the loofah, guys, I have to show you this. This is the most beautiful thing right now. Remember, it's November. See, November the 2nd. And this is a pineapple sage. It started as a teeny tiny little plant. And it blooms in October and November with these bright red flowers. It's gorgeous and it's ginormous. I also can use this plant to feed um, my Angora bunny, so it's safe for the bunny to eat. Um, and it smells, I kid you not, like pineapple. Pineapple and mm, sage, because it's called pineapple sage and it smells like that. Look at that thing, it's just gorgeous. I'm gonna get a little closer so you can see like all of these beautiful red blooms. Look at that, guys. It is just gorgeous. And from what I'm experiencing, also deer resistant. Now, it may be because I've got mint right in front of it. See, I've got mint and deer do not like mint. We have major deer around here. We've got um, 12 or 13 deer that live in this neighborhood and wander through. In fact, there was a big buck here last night when I came out here. Um, and they leave this plant alone. So again, it could be because of the mint. Um, I, I don't know, but the deer won't eat this. And there's no protection. You can see back there. There's a. I've got lettuce back there, and they. That's there's a wire, an electric, electrified fence back there, and they won't. You know, they won't touch that. But you would think they'd eat all this in front, but it won't. It's just gorgeous. I also have to show you this. This is a Camilla. Camilla's start. You start seeing um, the buds in late September and October, and then they start opening up to these beautiful light pink. You think it's spring here, but it's not. It's just gorgeous. And I'll show you on the other side the other one that I have. I have two different colors of Camilla here. Here's the other. Same Camilla, different color flower. It's just so pretty. And I like this version better because it's more of a tree form as opposed to a bush form. Um, and that one over there is getting really overgrown. We've tried to cut it back several times. But this thing, it's just so pretty. Look at that. And it is November the 2nd. And look at all those beautiful blooms on the side of our house. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous.